of 37 measurements from a population with a population standard deviation for had a sample mean 15 an independent random sample of 56 measurements from a second population standard deviation is 5 had a sample mean of 12 test the claim that the population mean of the first exceed that the population mean of second use a 1% level of significant or 99% confidence level so let's take a look what we know versus what we don't know. So it seems like we have to do a hypothesis test. So first population exceed of second. So it is going to be first population one exceed of population two. And also level of significant given as a 1%. So alpha is equal to 0 0.01. So this two fees is very important for us. Let's take a look what else is given. So n is given as a 37. So n is given as a 37. n is equal to 37. And population standard deviation is 4. This time sigma, which is the population standard deviation, is equal to 4. And also sample mean is given as a x bar, which is given as a 15. If I look closely, there is another sample, 56. So n is equal to 56. Has a population standard deviation is 5. So population standard deviation is equal to 5. And we do have a sample mean is equal to 12. So sample mean is equal to 12. Notice that I have n n. I may I have to make sure that they are different. So I'm gonna put all of them subscript one. So n sub one. So I'm gonna put down n sub one. This is n sub two. This is sigma sub one. This is sigma sub two. This is mean sub one and mean sub two. In other word, mean from the first population, mean from the second population. So these are the information we have given. Is there any other information we know? Is that we can we assume population standard deviation is equal? Population standard deviation. We have no idea. No, we don't know that actually. We don't know that population standard deviation assumed to be equal. So if not, we don't do full variance. Of course, we do. Since our population standard deviation is known, we can do the Z test. Okay, so let's take a look here what we're supposed to do. We're going to create a hypothesis test. The first one is the null hypothesis. So first thing we do, we set up as a null and alternative hypothesis. So I'm going to set up a null hypothesis each sub 0. Population mean 1 minus or equal to population mean 2. Or I can say population mean 1 minus population mean 2 equal to 0. That's always true. Null, we always assume they are equal. We have to believe into the claim. Then right away alternative, we don't believe is exceeded. So we're going to write the same thing here. On alt In alternative, h sub 1 or h sub a, I like h sub a for alternative mean 1 greater than mean 2, population mean 1 greater than population mean 2, or we can say population mean 1 minus population mean 2 greater than 0. That would be nice enough. This is null and alternative hypothesis. Next thing, are you going to do the Z test or are you going to do the T test? Since population standard deviation is known, I want to make sure that we understand that if since population standard deviation is known, we are going to do the z test so we're going to do the z test i'm going to have z is equal to sample mean one minus sample mean two the difference between sample mean one and sample mean two actually i'm going to put down this as a bar on the top sample mean one sample mean two minus population mean one minus population mean two over standard error of the mean which is population variance over sample 1 plus population standard deviation 2 square which is a variance over sample 2 okay so notice that we have something here equal to 0 so we're going to put this one we're going to cross this one out 
is going to be equal to 0. So we don't have to write this down. So uh, let's substitute everything here. If I substitute it, this is gone already because we assume this is going to be equal. So this is gone. So mean 1. So what is the mean 1? This is the mean 1. So 15 minus 12. So we do 15 minus 12 over big square root. We're going to do big square root here. And of course, population standard deviation, which is a 4. I'm going to square it 4 square. I'm going to just like that. Or I'm going to, I can put down just other one like 525 right away directly over n2 which is 56 and of course on the left side here under 4 square is going to be 37 is my sample size first sample I can just type this in, in the calculator and I did ahead of time and it's going to give me approximately it's going to give me approximately 3.20 let us see is 3.20. Let's verify with the calculator. So I'm going to plug it in 15 minus 12. And of course, you, you can enter or you can just go with the fraction 15 minus 12. Go downstairs. I can I need a square root. So second x square. And then of course, 4 square over 37. And I need to go right side plus 25 over 56. Again, I can do 5 square also, 5 square over 56. So, anyway, I want to write this is very fraction friendly calculator. TA30 access multi view. Enter is 3.200. Look, it's messing. So, our calculation was correct. Okay, so next thing we need, we have our null hypothesis alternative hypothesis test statistics the fee value we need a fee value so you need to find the fee value since this is a test statistic with the z so we're going to go to the z table at this point let's have a little bit of animation here so how we read our table actually so we're going to go to the table 3.2 so we're going to go 3.2 and 0 0.00 because this decimal is zero and we look into this two intersection and that is what we are looking for if it is one tail is going to be plus well we have to look into that whether it is one tail or two tail so this is one tail right tail so let's draw a bell curve here let's draw a bell curve so if i i know this is going to be my uh, right tail test because it's to the right and let's take a look here. We go 3.2 and let's see what this table gives us actually. If I go to the Z table on the left side, right over this 2 point, sorry, 3.2 is going to give me 0 0.99, 0 0.9993. I am not interested into this part here. I am interested more on this part because it's to the right. So. Either I can go with a negative 3.2, negative 3.2, and then go down, I get my fee value, or I can subtract from 1. So if I subtract 1 minus 0.9993, I get my fee value. That will give me this, actually. That would be my fee value. So let's take a look. We're going to go to the table. So uh, at 3.2, notice that 3.2 if I look into that is going to give me 0.9993 and exactly that's what we had 0.993 3.2 and this is z table z table and 0 0.00 so that's 0.993 okay so if you happen to have another table so let's take a look here this one down here I can look into negative side right or is giving me the answer Right always giving me the answer 0 0.00, 0 0 0.0007. So that is basically this fee here. So my fee value is 0 0.0007. In other words, 0 0.0007 is my fee value. Now, how do we come up with our decision? Compare fee value with alpha. So step four is going to be our decision, actually. It's decision. So 
if phi value if phi value is greater than alpha we do not reject since phi value since this phi value and alpha was 0 0.01 alpha was 0 0.01 so i'm going to put down the write down the alpha here actually alpha was 0 0.01 so let's take a look here what is happening here so my phi value is 0 0.0007 and 0 0.01 is the alpha that's the alpha and that's the phi value so if i look into here phi value was always less than alpha so therefore we reject the null hypothesis okay so we reject null hypothesis well in other word this we have a threshold one percent but this is way outside it's like outlier it's way outside so we reject the null hypothesis it's actually if you think of a critical value approach is is outside all the way outside so we reject how do you write down the conclusion conclusion is basically a simple way of writing conclusion let's do this we say at one percent significant level data does provide sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis and we write down the last sentence of the problem so let's quickly uh, write it down here so we say at one percent significant level the data does provide does provide sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis claim that the population mean population mean of the first one exceeded the population mean of the second one so that's it we just write down the last sentence always that's the conclusion actually so if we if we go back here we did actually five steps we need whatever we need we just sort it down then this is given we know it's exceeding one tail right tail and that's the alpha in all hypotheses is assume they are equal, population is equal, alternative hypothesis, they are, one is greater than another one, so of course mean 1 minus mean 2 greater than 0, and we substitute everything into the z-test, why we are using z-test, because this is a population standard deviation is known, and of course we substitute, we get 3.20, then we find the fee value, how do we find the fee value? Because it's to the right, we have to go to the opposite table to get this fee value, or we have option, we get exactly this one here, we go down here, this one, and we subtract from one, is going to give us this fee value to the right. So we conclude that fee value is less than alpha, so therefore we reject the null hypothesis, and conclusion is going to be at 1% significant level, data does provide sufficient evidence that the population mean of the first exceed of the second thank you